So today we're going to be fluke fishing. I'm out here with my buddy Sean, my buddy Carl. We're heading over to the AB Reef. We're going to be fishing an area known as the Wall on the north side. We're going to be fishing two types. We're going to be dragging dead sticks with probably Peruvians and uh, strips of squid. And then we're also going to be using uh, the KO rigs, which is basically a jig style rig, a high-low, with a little chrome ball on it and see what we could uh, fish up. Just starting to drift. The tide's going to change in a little bit. So we'll see what goes on and see what happens today. Tides, tides should be good. About an hour is going to be high water. You got a nice little drift. You're going to be drifting about 0.5 to 0.8, which is uh, pretty ideal for the fluke fishing. You know, there's reports they're catching a couple here off Long Beach, so I'm going to give it a shot and see what happens. Yeah, we don't want to get too close to this edge here. We'll just lose every rig, so we're going to get right on that drop, and hopefully these fish are holding tight. Yeah, a lot of times they, they, they hold real tight to the wall there, and once you drift off of it, you just got to go back up, do a couple short drifts, and, uh, you know, you, you keep tight, and you should get a couple. Now, this wall is basically, what was it, the Belt Parkway or something they dumped here? You know exactly? But it is concrete, though. Yeah, there's a, there's a bunch of different things that they set out here. They, you know, there's a main wall. It's about two miles, two miles long that runs east to west. Comes up pretty high, about 15, 20 feet. And then you have a bunch of scattered, you know, concrete blocks. There's a couple little barges sunk and stuff like that. You know, it's a pretty big area, about two and a half miles wide, two and a half long. Yeah, we're coming up on it right now. These fish, when they're coming in, you know, as the season starts, the water gets warmer, they're coming in basically from the continental shelf. Yes. But how come it's always the bay's going to get the fish first versus out here in the water where you know they're passing to get into the bays and all the inlets and everything? But they, they don't, water temperature is, is a, a roadway for them from the continental shelf into these bays. And, you know, that has a lot to do with uh, the way their feeding patterns too, you know. They don't feed particularly well in the colder water. So in the spring, like we have now, you know, it's the end of May, early May and things like that, you want to fish in them deep back bays because the water temperature rises quicker and warms up faster. So those fish feed better than they would, say, in the ocean. Are you uh, talking about the shallows back, the 8, the 10 feet of water? Yeah, you want to fish anywhere from, say, 6 to 14, 15 feet. Okay. No more than that early, really early. You know, and surprisingly this year, they're feeding in the ocean, you know, but the temperature's up. It's up to about almost 62 degrees. And, um, you know, those fish don't usually turn on out here until, you know, mid-June or so because of the water temperature, you know. And surprisingly this year, it bumped up. We had that, that really good shot of 90 degree weather for right. a little while there, and that helped the fishery out here in the ocean, you know. But they do start in the back bays, and then they work their ways out into the main channels of the bay, and, and then they start feeding out here in the ocean, you know. What we have here is, you know, a rig I like to use and, you know, pretty productive you have it's called a you know a KO rig just a high low you get your ball on the bottom with a uh, snap and you got your two rivets you know about I guess eight or eight or eight inches apart or so your four oh gamagatsu hook on this rig here we have a couple of gulps which are very productive we're out here fishing in the ocean so you want to use uh, depending on the current wind a weight relevant but this is just a simple rig, you know, swivel up top, about two feet of leader, a couple of dropper loops, two rivets, a couple of gulps. And it's a very simple rig, very productive. And you get them on the gulp, you know, the pink gulp. I got a net on each side here too. Pretty nice. You get them right up on that wall, you know, you want to fish right up on the wall, you get real tight, you usually get a bunch of fish right up in there, and then you fall off the wall a little bit, you go back and do it again, you know. It seems like we're going to be doing a lot of short drifting today and just get back up on the edge of that wall. Exactly. All right, Sean, right now we're right back on the edge, pretty tight. Let's see if they're hanging close again. Oh, I just lost that one. That was a pretty decent one I just hit. Both my baits are gone. A little slow on the hook set there, Joe. I was, I was. <laughs> You just want to keep a nice steady rhythm with your rod and just keep it bouncing, you know. If you start to feel like you're not holding bottom anymore, just let out a little bit of line until you feel it. You want to definitely make sure you're on the bottom. If you're not there, you're not going to catch anything. You have to be on the bottom for these fish. They lay right on the bottom, and uh, if you're not there, you're not getting a bite. Today also, we have really ideal drifting conditions. It's perfect. 
but you'll get days where you can't hold bottom. So it's also a good thing to do is uh, invest in a drift sock. And the drift sock will basically, if you're using eight ounces, once you put the drift sock in the water, you'll probably go down to five ounces. It makes a huge difference. Especially in the ocean. That's, Absolutely. That's definitely key. A lot of times in the summer, you get that, that wind real hard off the land in the morning, and then you get that offshore breeze in the afternoon. It's ideal to have it if you, you know, if you, if you could find one, you grab it. It's, uh, it's a good thing to have on the boat, you know. Not super big, but let me know when you're ready. Yep. You're reeling your fish up here. You want to go head first into the net. What you want to do is you want to grab the middle of your rod here, keep the, the fish right under the surface, and drag the fish into the net. Don't go bringing, don't go chasing the fish with the net. You want to bring the fish to the net, not the net to the fish. Never head first. Net tail. Exactly. Head first is very important. These fish have a tendency to get to the top and people try and net them and they, they scramble all over and end up, you that know, make it, I think. busting them off. We'll give this one a measurement. It looks like it's pretty good. Using this light stuff is great out here too, but you see a lot of people will come out and they got such heavy, heavy tackle, way overkill, 30, 40 pound test line. Rods are used for like bluefish and striped bass, but this little bait run, bait caster, I think, believe it's a Corrado 300 little mojo rods, light, you know, it's this is stuff that you use for basically largemouth bass. That's all you need. It's, but it's fun, you know, you're out here having a great time, you're having a good fight with the fish, spinning rods especially, and then you use them, what, in the bay? Yeah, the bay we use, uh, the, the lighter tackle you can get away with, the better. I mean, it, it that's wants, a good fish. All right, fish on, there you go. That's a good one, doesn't feel like a yeah, uh, fluky though, feels a little uh, sea bassy. Yeah. Yeah, the, the lighter lighter tackle you get away with the better. In the in the bay, I like fishing with the light spinning rods, you know, right. with the shallow water and stuff. And you know, as you uh, get out to the deeper water here, especially in the ocean, you want to use a little heavier rod. You want something that's got a light tip with a little bit of backbone in order to set the hook nice on the fish. And you know, oh, you definitely God. don't want to yeah. go overkill. Nice Looks big like a sea big bass. Big giant sea big bass. Sea wow. Bass knucklehead. Look at that. That's a beauty. Look at the colors on that thing. That huh? is a beauty. Yeah, I'll give you a hand getting them in here. Yeah, Beautiful cool. fish. Look at the colors on this guy. Unfortunately, right now, the sea bass is closed for us. What would you say that is, about a three pound sea bass? Yeah, a little less than that, but you can see the colors on them. Beautiful. Turquoise. These fish are actually uh, hermaphrodites, so they impregnate themselves, you know? Once they get into a certain stage of their of their lives, they switch either a female and impregnate yourself or you just turn to a male, but they have both sex organs and uh, that's how they reproduce. Beautiful looking fish. Awesome though. fish. Go ahead Look and let the them color's go. incredible. Yeah. This is a nice keeper sized fish for this area, you know, when, this, when it's in season, which comes up in July. Beautiful. All right, you're ready to fillet. Fluke here, you want to start on the white side, see? You know, just get a good grip on them. Kind of want to grip inside the gill there. You got your shoulder here, your back fin. You want to make a nice slow cut. You know, make sure you get most of the shoulder meat there. You're going to stick your knife on the white side of the, the skeleton, slide your knife down the backbone here like that. Nice and easy, see? Push it in, Just push all the way through. You let the knife do the work. Come back, get a swipe there. Go through the uh, stomach bone here. Just keep your knife nice, nice, and, nice and flat. And that's it, there's one of your fillets. Get all the meat off there. You know, you want to make sure that you get all your shoulder meat, get all your meat on each side, that's all. Nice clean fillet. Same thing on the other side. Get up on your shoulder. You're going to do the same thing on this side, just starting on the brown side, go down. Just push your knife. You don't want to do much else. Just let your knife do your work. You go in, just push. Push it right through. 
coming up going right along the spine there you put the tip of your knife on the other side of the spine get to the belly bone a quick cut through there and slide your knife down that's it there's the other side of your fillet you want to be able to see right through it I like to come here and take off your ribbons you know you could use these two ribbons here for your uh, next fishing trip you know they use those as for the fluke strips and stuff like that come with your fillet knife just start on the, the skinny end the tail end get a little start to it use the skin as a grip and same thing use your knife let the knife do the work cut out your belly bone there's a nice beautiful fillet fluke ready for the dinner table so Sean, listen, I have never seen anybody flay fluke as fast as you. So what do you say we have a little game right now? Let's time you and see how fast <laughs> you can do one whole fish. All right, let's do it. You up for the challenge? Yeah, let's go. All right, you tell me when. I'm going to hit start. Ready to go. Fourteen seconds. <laughs> <laughs>